Hello and welcome to this O&DR Montreal video. This is video 202 in our series of XK videos and this video we're going to cover the aerial mast lubrication. Not so much the um, the extending mechanism if you would, um, but more the internal cogs of the motor assembly. Now it's very easy to lubricate the outside with WD-40 or a bit of uh, uh, grease or whatever but the internals are, you need to open up the unit to get at them. And that's what we're gonna cover in uh, this video. So <coughs> if you're not aware, the aerial motor unit is located directly underneath the mast behind this interior trim. So we're gonna take that off and show you how to get inside the motor unit and lubricate those cogs. The tools you're gonna to need are a 14 millimeter spanner, a T30, socket and an eight millimeter socket and an extension bar or a driver a ratchet an x screwdriver and a flat screwdriver for cleaning and lubrication you're going to need some uh, cleaning rags a youth toothbrush is handy um, and together with some white spirit and also some new lubricant um, of your choice in our case i used uh, molly grease um, lithium grease so but other greases are quite as uh, good. I'll split this video down into several sections as per usual. Um, section one will look at the aerial removal from the vehicle itself. Secondly we'll look at the internal workings and lubrication of those and then finally the aerial testing. Aerial removal then. So the aerial motor unit is hidden behind the luggage trim, in this case uh, the right hand side of the Jaguar XK8. Now the luggage trim it's very easy to be removed. It can be pulled out uh, from the rearmost in, ve in vehicle, pull it away from the lamp housing. There's no retaining clips to worry about. You've just got to lever the trim away from where it's being tucked under items in the boot. The trim actually can be removed completely. It actually pivots from the re uh, the where the uh, fuel tank is and it can be pulled straight out. Once it's out, you can see the location. It's actually located behind the CD multi-changer and amplifier housing. You can actually get to it without, without removing these, but for the purpose of this video, and I'm actually repairing the CD multi-changer at the same time, I took the housing out. It was a bit better taking the photographs and working on it. Um, you can see the aerial motor unit mounting points clearly now. There is one bolt for the earth, of the actual aerial unit and two bolts for the bracket holding the aerial up. First of all undo the bolt for the aerial earth strap. You'll need an eight millimeter socket for that. Make sure not to use a little spring washer um, as you undo it. Then you need to use a torque socket to remove the two screws holding the bracket on. That's T30 Torx. Now the aerial unit is now you uh, loose but it is still fixed at the top. The aerial is located uh, at the rear of the fender with actually a retaining nut on the aerial outside. This is where you need your 14 millimeter spanner to remove that nut. You should be able to see the threads there and the aerial will drop through the hole in the rear fender. And now the aerial will still be connected electrically. I left the disconnection of the electrical socket to this point because it's easier to get out once the aerial uh, motor unit is loose. There's a white uh, connector on there. You need to depress the tab and pull it out. There's a small tab in the middle. You need to depress that and it unlocks and you can pull it off. Uh, in our case, was a zip tie um, holding or a tie wrap holding the wiring loom together. You need to clip that off with some snips. Then move the tie wrap and the loom out of the way. And you should be able to then disconnect the aerial socket. Just pull that apart to disconnect. It's very simple. The only thing holding it to the vehicle then is the aerial drain pipe, which is still uh, connected via grommet to the uh, outside of the vehicle. Just simply pull that out should pull straight out. Now the aero motor and the attending unit can be removed, the vehicle are completely uh, undone. Section two then, the internal workings of the aerial motor. 
There are six screws that need to be removed to open up the casing. The five I've circled and then one actually in the center has a pivot point. You need to use your cross screwdriver to remove these screws. Once all six um, are removed, you the case should come open. It's very easy to leave it open. And once you've got it open, you have access to the antennae internals. Now, I've broken these down into just four sections. So they got the antennae itself, the, uh, the mast, the circuit board, a motor, and the actual mechanism. Now, we're going to concentrate on the mechanism in this case. We need to clean that up and lubricate it uh, to allow the aerial to go completely, extend completely. I was having troubles with it extending, and um, albeit I lubricated the outside, I believe the mechanism itself was having a problem. So we lifted the round white cap, um, and it reveals the antenna drive with all the teeth. It's wound up like a spring inside the housing. You can take the lid off, it's very easy to put back together. I just put it to one side here, and underneath that cap um, reveals a housing or a cover plate. The cover plate should just lift straight off. You might need to use a flat screw driver just to flick it up. Now you can see the all the internal cogs. You can see them there. You've got one driving from the motor and then some transfer gears to a big gear uh, onto the antenna drive. Now you can, you can see the grease has all been displaced and gone hard in uh, this case. So I think it's well worth doing this, especially if your aerial's 20 odd years old. You can actually remove um, the drive from the housing and unwind the cover plate. So take all the uh, plastic apart. Now you have a clear access to the internal cogs again to lubricate and clean up. The main drive cog should just lift out. It's not retained in any way other than the case, the outside casing. And you can see the large motor cog um, underneath everything and that looked actually quite clean I didn't think that needed a lot of attention so I left that in situ. The main drive cog actually was quite dirty though um, and also the antenna drive was also very dirty and the dirt was a mixture of old grease and dirt I believe um, and it wasn't very wasn't acting as a very good lubricant. So then we used the cloth to clean off all the dirt and an old toothbrush and some white spirit to help clean in between the teeth. It was very effective. Uh, also, there's a, more, a small dr idle pulley um, for the antenna drive. That looked quite dirty as well. So we took that off. Uh, it lifts straight out um, and we cleaned that as well. Same way. And then we applied the grease. Apologies, it looks quite horrible. But we greased everything up uh, with uh, this grey lithium grease. And then we rewound the plastic cover plate back on. You need to make sure you get it the right way up. It's not a big problem if you don't. You just undo it and do it up the other way. Try again. All the way to the antenna drive. And uh, add grease to the drive teeth. Then compress the antenna back or wind it back into the white housing. It's uh, not it's not difficult. Ensure the dry antenna drive is completely back in place. It's not snagging on anything. And then refit the case and secure with six screws. It's really easy to be honest. It is as easy as I'm describing. The testing then. Um, I was very surprised. The aerial before I did this was refusing to come all the way up. I had tried some WD-40 on the outside, but as I say, that wasn't successful. But now, as soon as I've greased the internals, the aerial came up without any issue and also retracted uh, all the way down, as I'll show you now. There you go, it's retracting, 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 success. Ah, there you go, all done, all back together and the aerial's extending as it should. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Um, before we, before I leave you, a bit of a quiz question regarding this uh, bit of a fancy plate I've put on my luggage lid. Um, so the quiz question is, 
what other limited or special edition X100 came with this sort of ID plate on its luggage lid? If you're a regular viewer, you'll know the answer. So please uh, let us know in the comments and uh, real kudos if you do know the answer. Anyway, hope you find that interesting and obviously the video of how to take your aerial apart. Um, thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more Xcade videos. See you later.